In this class, we are going to create our very first process application in Oracle Process Automation. First of all, you have to navigate to your Oracle Process Automation instance. Once you land into the home page, if you have created any applications previously, it will be listed over here under My Application. Also, the applications which are created by your colleagues or teammates will be visible under All. Suppose you are not the owner, but they are the owner or the creator, then it will be showing under all. Suppose you have created any application, then it will come under my applications. If you see over here on the right top corner, there is a create button. Click on this and you have to select one of the options in the create applications. We are going to create an application from scratch. We will be selecting this option, create process application. Next, it will ask the name. We will tell my first OPA app. Here the version by default will be 1.0 version. Suppose if you want to start with 2.0 or 3.0 so on and so forth, you can modify this. I am keeping this default and clicking on create. Our application has been created successfully. Here you will see the metadata like who created, what is the name and the versions. We will touch upon the versioning concept later. And also if you see over here, there is a menu, we can see the information, delete, export, clone the application. So we are not going to focus on the lifecycle events in this class. We will cover this in our coming classes. Now click on this application. Clicking on that application, you will land into this process application designer page. Here it is saying you can create the processes, UIs, decisions, connectors and the roles. There are two things we have as of now created the OPA application with the name my first OPA app but we have to create the process within the application. Now in order to create we can click on this plus component or click on add over here and select from the processes the right one which suits your business requirement. Now there are two type of processes at the time of recording this class that is structured process and the dynamic process. Structured process means if you know that the workflow or the process automation you are going to build, it is going to follow a set of sequence of events. Like suppose, if you raise a leave application, then the application will first go to manager, then it will go to manager's manager and at the end, it will update the HCM system. Suppose you know this path, then you should be creating the structured process. Now coming to the dynamic, so this dynamic process you have to use when you are not knowing what flow the process automation has to take based on some outcome. Suppose you are raising a process automation request for a patient. Based on the diagnosis of first doctor, then the doctor can route the patient or the application of the patient to n number of doctors who is master in their own field. Like suppose if the patient comes up with some issue in the skin, they are having a skin rash, then the skin rash could be due to n number of conditions. First, the physician will take the sample of the skin for testing and based on that, the doctor might route that to the expert like a skin doctor or some other doctors based on the results of the testing. So in this case, since the outcome we are not knowing, we have to go for the dynamic process. So as of now, for the simplicity purpose, I am going for this structured process. So most of the time we will go for the structured process in our day-to-day -day implementations to solve business requirements. Here I will tell my first structured process. I will keep the name default and click on create. So our component got created successfully. Now let me just click on this. So it will open up the designer where we can design our structured process. So as I told, a structured process will have a start event and the end event. Between that, we can add the human actions, system events, we can call the integrations, any APIs, any events, and so forth things. We will learn those concepts going ahead in our classes. Now first, if you see, we are having a pane over here that is the swim lane. Now we can name this as per our business requirement. Suppose we are going to add the sequence of events over here for some user to take action then we can create the roles over here by clicking on edit by clicking on plus over here we can create one more role so when we once we create the role it will be visible over here so as of now 
by default there is a process user role which will be created when we create any application from scratch so i'm selecting same suppose if you want to create one more then you can just click on this edit here you will get the option to select the roles now as of now we don't have roles in order to create the roles we have to go to add and create the role over here new role so this we will see later point of time as of now we don't want the two swim lanes i will select this and delete now coming to the first action over here that is the start event so we can name this like my start action something like this and even the title you can give suppose you are creating this application for leave we can name this as leave application and we have to attach this action to some web form that we have to create and attach now in order to create a web form we can click on this add button and click on this web form so web form are used in order to start the process instance because suppose you are creating a leave application then the application might ask you the reason for you and the date between what date you are going to take the leave so you are going to define those things in the web form by making use of web form user will be able to initiate this process instance now let me just name this as my form or my new form i can name this as as i'm going to create the new application click on create so once you create the web form then you can select from here i think it's not reflected let me just again select this double click and click on this now it's reflected some of the times the changes won't reflect instantaneously so you can just toggle it back and come back to the screen now let me click on this close now we have created the web form we have attached the web form over here that is over here ui my leave form but we have not defined the fields in the web form like the leave reason from two dates so and so forth thing so we can click on this edit one of this option is clicking on edit it will open the web form or we can go back to our my opa app here you will see under the ui is the web form created you can click on this and you can work on the web form there are couple of ways how you can navigate to your web form now here let me add the fields first i will tell ask for the leave reason done next i will ask for the date from date in the date i will write as from date here also i write from date done next i will ask to date from to what date the person is going to take leave we can drag and drop side by side as well if you drop one it will align according to the number of components or the fields you have added in each line in this case first line we have only one field so it is touching across the web form over here in second we are having two fields added so it is touching like this now here i will name this as to date here also i will name it as to date so this is the very simple web form we have created now let us go back to our process in order to go back just click on this my opa app click on processes click on this my structured process so we have added the web form over here and we have attached that to the first action that is the start action over here and we have provided our my leave form like this now in order to activate your application and consume the process automation application you should make sure it should be just saying no validation errors over here it should be right check mark now before that we have to associate our user to the role so our process if you see over here go to the processes my structured process we are saying that this my start action is associated with process user only if your user is part of that process user then you will be able to raise a request for this process now coming to the roles you will see all the roles available in your process automation now here what we have to do is currently we do not have any users i will add my user over here i will search for john my user that is this one click on add i will give him all access that is you want to manage the application done this is the first thing you have to do also you can add the groups or the roles in fusion suppose if you are syncing the fusion roles to idcs then it will become the groups in idcs now once you added the roles once you have checked there are no validation errors in your process automation that is over here i'm seeing a right check mark i will click on activate 
click on activate button over here it will be enabled just click on activate it will take the snapshot and activate our process automation application we are getting the message called as activated so in our introduction class we had seen there are two environments in oracle process automation one is the development environment another is a runtime environment development environment is known as a designer so this is the designer with which we have created the process automation application now coming to the runtime so using the runtime we have to initiate a request and we can track the instance like what is the progress of our automation request which we have raised that we will see in our next class